Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be taking a look at the Anycubic Photon Mono M7 Pro. Now this printer is a part of Anycubic's latest and greatest lineup of resin 3D printers. And Anycubic was kind enough to send one out to me so that way I can test it and share it with you guys. So thank you Anycubic for this resin 3D printer. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up this resin 3D printer, going over all of the specs and features that this printer has to offer, as well as comparing it to other resin 3D printers on the market and FDM printers as a whole. So without wasting any more time, let's Let's jump into the video. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the unboxing slash setup. Now I already took it out of the box and this is what you will see afterwards. Up on the top here in this piece of styrofoam, you will see the bed plate and you can just slip it straight out of the styrofoam and set it to the side. Next up in this cardboard box, this is where you will find all of your accessories and tools for the printer, including the power cable and the bed scraper and all that fun stuff. So make sure you have this handy and off to the side. In this box, you'll also find the lid for the autofill resin feature, which we will get to later on. Next up in this piece of styrofoam, you will find the actual pump motor for the auto resin fill. And the cool thing about this printer is it actually has sensors and plugs for all of these different accessories and parts of the machine. So it actually knows when things are plugged in, including the resin vat, uh, the large piece on the left that you see back there actually plugs into the machine. So it knows that the vat is installed. After that, you can just take the printer out of the styrofoam and there's all the pieces. Next, you're going to want to take off this protective film off of the LCD screen. And in the baggie that includes the leveling paper, you're going to also find the screen protector. Remove the part that doesn't have the number two on it, and then you stick that onto the LCD, trying to remove all of the bubbles so that way you don't have any inconsistencies on your prints. And something that I use to help me is I use this little bed scraper along with this microfiber towel to help me remove all of the bubbles. Once all of the bubbles are removed, you can then go ahead and peel off the top part of the screen protector, plug it in and turn it on. Once it's on, it'll actually walk you through all of the instructions to installing this for the first time. You're just going to spin the knob on the top of the Z axis and then install the bed plate. Also make sure to remove the protective film that is on the build plate. Otherwise you're going to have a very bad day for your first print. Once that is installed, you're then going to want to grab the resin vat and we're going to take this out of the packaging, remove the protective cover on the bottom of the vat and then install it onto the printer. And like I said, these actually have sensors that you plug into the printer on the back left. So make sure that that clicks in properly. And if you want, go ahead and run a bed level test. Okay, so now that we have set up the Anycubic Photon Mono M7 Pro, let's go ahead and take a look at all of the specs and features that this printer has to offer and compare it to some of the other resin printers in the market right now. The Anycubic Photon Mono M7 Pro features a 10.1 inch 14K light turbo 3.0 LCD. It can print up to 170 millimeters per hour. Anycubic's dynamic temperature control resin vat can heat up to 25 degrees Celsius in about 20 minutes, which is really fast, which is good if you're using high viscosity resins such as Rigid 100 or Bio resins. It's resin auto fill unit refills mid print. So you never have to worry about your printer running out of resin while you're printing off something large. It will literally just keep filling up the vat and make sure that it has enough resin to complete the print, which is such an amazing feature. And like I said, it's incredible that they included this with the printer itself. This printer also has intelligent sensors that monitor different parts of the printer, such as making sure that the platform is actually installed onto the printer before you go ahead and print, watching the resin level, being able to detect any failed prints and other features like that. Their floating platform provides a leveling free setup, which is awesome because it's ready straight out of the box. Their built-in Anycubic Air Pure Purifier removes 99% of VOCs, which is incredible and actually allows you to almost use this thing in the same sort of environment that you could use an FDM printer. The build volume is 223 by 126 by 230 millimeters. The M7 Pro also rocks a five inch UI touchscreen. And then I also just wanted to show you guys how to install the auto resin pump. And all you have to do is replace the resin bottles lid with the auto pump lid. And you're just going to insert it in. Make sure you take out this wire and plug it into the back of the printer. Then after you install the pump onto the printer like this, so that way the prongs are facing the resin, you're just going to install these two tubes onto the top of the lid. The clear one's going to go onto the smaller port and the black one onto the larger port. 
So after using this for a couple weeks, I wanted to go ahead and show off some of the prints that I was able to make on this printer. And I got to say, I am super impressed with their resin and this machine as well. It's the first time I've ever used any Anycubic resin printer or resin. Let's just go ahead and take a look at them. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of the test prints that I got off of the Photon Mono M7 Pro. And first up, we have this Doomslug 3D print from Skyward. Next up, this Insuke statue from Demon Slayer. And at the time of filming this video, it is coming close to Halloween, so I decided to print a pumpkin with some skulls in it. And this is the Firethorn Dragon model that the printer comes with. And as you guys can see, these prints came out really, really good. All of these were printed using the water washable resin. And I'm sure you guys can still see some of the supports in the prints, but I will get to that in a little bit later. But mostly what I was trying to see is how well this printer was going to be able to print. So let's go ahead and take a look at each of these prints individually. So first up, the Doom Slug print. And on all of these prints, I used the water washable resin, which I've never used before. And I think that might have been why some of the texture is weird. But as far as the quality of the print, there's zero layer lines and there's no Z wobble. So as far as the actual print goes, it came out really, really good. And I think it's just the resin. I forgot to mix it up for some reason. I think that's why some of these prints are a little weird. And as you can see on this pumpkin, there are some weird inconsistent lines, but it's not the actual print. It's just like discoloration of the resin. And once again, that's why you should mix up your resin. But the actual print itself came out really, really good. And this model actually has like the texture of a pumpkin it came out really really good and i'm super impressed all of the islands were handled really good by the supports and the quality is just amazing next up we have this dragon test print and this was after i shook up the bottle and put it into the vat and you can very much tell that there's no weird texture or inconsistent coloration and the details on this model came out absolutely flawless. All of the scales and textures on the dragon's bodies and even the way that the wings are sort of differentiating in terms of texture, they genuinely look like thinner parts of skin on the dragon's wings. And it's just super impressive, especially on the underneath where there's a lot of areas on the model that could have been messed up, but it just handled it so well. And I just want to kind of show you guys, if you look at the glare on his neck right there that I'm trying to show you, there is no lines. You cannot see a single layer line on these models. And here's the Insuke 3D print. And I hope that I'm saying his name right. I'm not sure if I am. But basically, this model has a lot of different patterns and textures. And I wanted to give this one a test between different printers. So from left to right, we have the Elegu Mars 5 Ultra, the Anycubic Photon Mono M7 Pro, and the Anycubic Cobra S1. And all three of these prints came out pretty good. But let's take a deeper dive and look at all three of them individually. So as you can see from a general look on each of these models, they all came out relatively good. The Elegoo Mars 5 Ultra was printed with a standard resin, so I cleaned it with isopropyl alcohol. The next one was the Photon Mono M7 Pro with the water washable resin. And the Anycubic Cobra S1 was just a generic gray PLA that I got off of Amazon. So first of all, let's just take a comparison of FDM versus resin, and you can very clearly tell, especially in his like waistband area and the pants, the pants has a lot of weird inconsistent ripples on the FDM versus the resin prints are just completely smooth and flow a lot better. And the biggest difference that I noticed between the Mars 5 Ultra and the Photon Mono M7 Pro is that the Mars 5 Ultra had this weird Z wobble on his arm. And when you're printing with resin and you're trying to make these small models, you don't want any weird inconsistent lines because they stick out like a sore thumb, especially if you're trying to do it for a game or whatever. And these models were shrunk down to 50% scale. 
And something else that I wanted to show you guys and compare real quick is the swords. And as you can see, the one on the left is the Elegu. The sword just has a lot of droops and inconsistencies. And then on the one on the right is the Photon Mono. And it just handled all of those tricky spots so well. And I'm really impressed with the way that it turned out. This is my first time using the water washable resin, so it is a little bit trickier and I haven't really tuned my printer to that yet. But nonetheless, it came out really good. And this is the comparison between the Cobra and the Photon and it's just night and day. The FDM prints just cannot keep up with the resin prints in terms of quality. You can see the individual layer lines, the details on the face, the hands, and just all around the amount of detail that the Photon was able to capture. Okay, and that is the Anycubic Photon Mono M7 Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope I was able to show you guys everything that you wanted to know about this printer. And all in all, it's a really great resin 3D printer. My favorite feature by far is the resin pump that it comes with, so that way it can auto fill and unload the resin from the vat. I think that's just the best feature ever and the fact that it comes with the printer is that much cooler. I would have thought that an accessory like that would probably be something that you have to upgrade with later on, not that it would come with the machine, so that's awesome that it does. I'm really impressed with the results that I got from the test prints that I did, especially from that little statue. Compared to the FDM print, that is like night and day. It's crazy how much detail you can get from these things. And having the app available for this printer is a super useful feature as well. So if you guys would like to see a video on Elegoo's competition for this resin 3D printer, go ahead and click on this video right here to see the Elegoo Mars 5 Ultra. And click on this video right here for any Cubic's fully enclosed S1 combo that is their multi-filament FDM 3D printer. Once again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.